And now over to Phil. Hello. Um, so I'm going to talk about download management on metered connections, uh, which is something that I was looking at recently at Endless as part of our work on Endless OS. Um, so what is the problem? Um, many people, especially in sort of non-Western countries, use metered internet connections where they get charged for the bandwidth they use. Um, this means that they can't download everything they want to, um, when they want to, and often they have to be quite careful and sort of in control of what they download each month. They have to mentally prioritize certain things over other things, stop some things from being downloaded. Um, especially if some of those updates are quite large, like operating system updates or flat pack updates or whatever. Um, <clears throat> as they're part of our target market, um, Endless has been quite interested in making it easier for people with such internet connections to download what they want and when they want and without causing them huge bandwidth bills, or at least making them aware on and in control of those bandwidth bills. Um, it's worth noting that what I'm discussing during this talk only applies to kind of quotation marks, big downloads. Um, the definition of big is, is not really defined, but think of it what you will, like OS updates, flat pack updates. Um, and the solution that we've come up with is a, a sort of voluntary service for software components to use. It's not like a network firewall. It's not enforced queuing. It's not a mandatory thing that applies to everything. It's a kind of opt-in service that certain applications can use to query um, whether they should do a download and when. <coughs> so what is metering? Um, I'm going to give a bit, a bit more detail on the definition of metered connections as, as I see it. Um, they're connections where you pay per unit of bandwidth that you use rather than paying a fixed price per month for unlimited bandwidth. Um, pricing structures vary a lot. Some tariffs allow unlimited downloads at a certain time of day, for example, early in the morning, overnight for OS updates, um, or they might allow downloads from certain websites for free and not from others, which is not net neutral, but it happens. Um, and each network provider, and there might be many network, pro network providers, um, might have several tariffs. And those tariffs might change regularly. They might apply promotions during certain months for certain non-net neutral websites or whatever. There's all sorts. Um, specific examples would be like a tariff that allows free access to Facebook, but not to other websites. Um, does it affect me? Um, most people in this room you probably wouldn't immediately think that it does affect you. Um, <clears throat> but it, it kind of does in certain ways. Um, it's, it's typical to have an unlimited home or work internet connection for most of us, I think. Um, but you can encounter meter connections on trains, certainly in the UK, where you, you sort of get on the train, and unless you have a first-class ticket, you have to pay to use the internet. Um, or public Wi-Fi hotspots in airports, you can pay for internet access if they haven't given you free Wi-Fi. Um, many mobile internet tariffs, unless you've got a contract, will make you pay per gigabyte. Um, so it does kind of affect the more powerful Linux desktop user in, in some ways. Um, but there are other ways that a connection can benefit from prioritizing downloads. For example, if your connection is slow, um, if you're on a home internet connection that's shared between the whole street um, in terms of its uplink to the, uh, the internet provider, or um, yeah, if, if you're in that situation, the number of parallel downloads you have, you might want to limit it so that some of them complete first. Um, so the important ones complete, you might want to prioritize your OS updates below everything else. You might want to prioritize the film that you're downloading or whatever before that, or your streaming, streaming TV. Who knows? Um, you also might want certain downloads not to start until you're back home. Like when you're traveling, you don't really care about certain things being downloaded. You can delay them until later. So we wrote Mogwai. Uh, it's a download scheduler. Applications which want to do big downloads tell the scheduler what they want to download. So its size, the domain name you're downloading it from, or quite a metadata like that. Um, the scheduler schedules all the incoming requests for downloads. And it signals each application when it's time to start downloading. Um, scheduler can preempt downloads, tell an application to pause its download and carry on later. Um, and then you can get prioritization 
in, in more real time. Um, the scheduling decisions are based on various things. Um, amongst those, there's a tariff file for each network connection that says what period of day the connection starts being metered, stops being metered, whether it's metered all the time, unmetered all the time, whether there are any bandwidth limits or capacity limits during those periods, um, and the format is extensible so that other properties could be added in future to describe more and more complicated network tariffs as we encounter them. Um, for example, we don't currently implement it, but we could start supporting uh, downloads on certain domain name as being metered or unmetered and that kind of non-net neutral behavior. As I said before, it is not security. It's an opt-in system. It's a DBus service that things can request um, download scheduling from, and they're free to ignore the answer. There's no enforcement going on. Um, and it doesn't currently monitor bandwidth usage either. So it's, um, it's not a closed feedback loop. It takes in the sizes that the applications say, I'm going to download one gigabyte, I'm going to download two gigabytes. It sums them all together. It calculates that against the tariff limit. Uh, and then it assumes that the applications play fair and that the size, sizes don't change, or that if they do, the applications notify of it. Um, but we could do work in future to improve that. Uh, How do I use it? Um, so as I said, it's a DBus service. It sits on the system bus. Um, any application can request things from it. It's currently used in NSOS in our fork of GNOME software um, and also in our OS updater, um, which is called EOS updater. Um, we have changes to GNOME Control Center to add it to the automatic updates, updates panel. Um, but none of this is sort of exclusive to us. If you want to use it, you can use the API from the uh, libmogwai schedule client, the first bullet point uh, library. Um, and that's a client for the DBus API. So that's sort of standard DBus mechanics. Um, there's an example for how to do that in the Mogwai schedule client utility, which is a command line utility that's essentially curl. It says, run this, download this file, save it here. But it does it in a scheduling aware manner. So if the daemon says, no, don't download that now, it won't download. It'll block until the daemon says yes. Um, but there's example code in there which you can start basing things off. Um, the PDF of these slides will contain links to to that code afterwards. So if you want to download it later and, and check out those links, you can. Um, but essentially, your application needs to create a schedule entry for every download that you, you care about doing. Um, set the metadata of the download, like the size, the domain, whatever. Um, and then you need to tie the state of your download to signals from the scheduler, um, telling it when to start the download, when to pause, when to resume. And then you need to update the scheduler saying, yep, I've finished now, or actually, I want to cancel this download. Forget about it. Here is a screenshot of what we have in Endless OS for scheduling downloads or scheduling OS updates um, in the control center. So you can see, in this case, I've got an unlimited connection, no metering. Um, but I can still schedule my updates to only happen during certain times of day. Um, if I were to connect to a metered connection, um, then the tick box in the middle would start to take effect, um, and the scheduling would still continue to take effect. What is left to do? Um, it's quite a big scope problem. There's, there's lots of things you can add to it, lots of tweaks you can make, lots of improvements to the scheduling you can do, lots of other sources of data you can pull in. Um, the next big task on the list is to add a monitoring daemon, which would sit sort of near to the system D level of the stack and use, um, what was it, per C group monitoring of the network connection usage to build a, a log of how much is being downloaded per application um, and store that somewhere. That information can then be used by the scheduler to close the feedback loop and say, yep, you've reached your limit for this download period. Everything else gets cancelled now. 
Um, but it could also be used by the GNOME usage application, for example, to show nice pretty graphs of what's being downloaded by each application, how much, um, how near to each limit each application is. Um, I've got a plan for how this can be implemented efficiently. Currently, what GNOME usage does is not particularly efficient. Um, the plan is using NF tables and, and systemd unit hierarchy. And it should be fairly straightforward to do, but I haven't had time to do it yet. Um, aside from that, the scheduler can always be made more clever. Um, it can take more factors into account, more different tweaks for when to start, when to stop, what to prioritize above what else. Um, it's a fairly open-ended problem. Um, and I'm willing to mentor people to implement this functionality in Mogwai because my time on it has been significantly reduced. Um, but mentoring is, is always something I'm happy to do. And that is that. Any questions?